Hello everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Amazon Bedrock with a Lambda function so that you could submit text prompts to get a response back from Bedrock. Now we're gonna be using the Python programming language and previously this was a little bit painful to do because the Python Bodo 3 library that was available in Lambda was not updated to support Amazon Bedrock. So you had to do some funky things like install a custom uh, layer that included the most recent version of Bodo 3. Uh, so that was the way to work around it. But now with Python version 3.12, which is available in AWS Lambda, you don't have to do that anymore. The newest version that supports Bedrock is now available. Um, so let me show you how to set all this up. So there's a couple steps here. The first thing we need to do is, if it's your first time using Bedrock, we need to request access to all the different models. Uh, we're gonna be using the Claude model in this case, but there's a bunch of other ones that support uh, text conversions that you'll see in a moment. Uh, then from there, we're gonna go into AWS Lambda. We're gonna create a function, then we're gonna drop in some code, and I'm gonna explain to you some gotchas that you may uh, experience along the way. So let's just get right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Bedrock section of the AWS console. So I'm just gonna click on this here. And so if this is your first time in Bedrock, you're gonna to want to enable the models. Um, you, you can skip this if you've already done this. But let me just show you how to do it. So if you click on that uh, tab here, these three horizontal lines here, you can expand the menu. And if you look at the bottom left here to where it says model access right here, so you're gonna to wanna to click on this. And uh, as you can tell, these are the different models, like these are the companies and these are the different models that are supported them, uh, supported by them. And you can see, uh, I already have access granted to the majority of these models. Some of them you have to uh, request, um, you have to submit some kind of additional documentation, but you want to basically uh, request access to all of these models. This doesn't cost you anything. This is just kind of like an opt-in thing that AWS makes you do. So in order to do that, you're gonna to wanna to click on this button right here in the top right where it says manage model access. You're gonna to wanna to click on this and then basically um, you just wanna check all the check boxes. So just like go down here and, and click all of them. Um, as you can see for Anthropic, you need to submit your use case details. They're a little bit more strict on this one. Uh, so you have to be a little bit more specific here. Um, and then Cohere, which we're gonna use in this demonstration, then you can like request the ones for Meta as well. So we're gonna save the changes here. Uh, sometimes this takes like a little while, they say 72 hours, but this takes like just a couple minutes in my experience. Okay, now that you've done this, we need to go to the Lambda section of the AWS console to make our function. So let's go and do that now. We're gonna type in Lambda in the search bar, go to Lambda and we're gonna to go to create function in the top right here. And we're gonna author this one from scratch and for function name, we're gonna call this the Vedrock demo. And I already have one, uh, demo two, okay, perfect. Uh, for runtime, we're gonna say Python 3.12. Make sure you select Python 3.12 here or else you're gonna have a problem. Um, you're gonna get like a client runtime bedrock does not exist error, uh, in which case you're gonna kind of need to install a layer, which is beyond the scope of this video. Um, and so for default execution role, we're gonna create a brand new one. And then once this is created, we're gonna go ahead and give us the permissions to call bedrock. And there's two APIs that you could potentially call. Um, and I'm gonna show you kind of the, the difference between them, but let's uh, go ahead and do this. So create new role with permissions, go to the bottom right, click on create function. And sometimes this takes a minute or so. So if this takes too long, I'll just fast forward it because uh, it does need to create that IEM role and do a couple other things for us as well. Okay, actually that was a lot faster than I expected. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add those permissions. So the API that we're gonna be interacting with here is called invoke model, but there is a second Bedrock API that you can use, which is called invoke model or invoke model as response stream or something like this. Um, that doesn't work well if you're just using a Lambda function as is. The difference between the two APIs is that the invoke model API, um, you make a request to the Bedrock service and then once it's done computing you know, the, the text prompt into a response, it'll send you everything all back all at once. Uh, whereas if you use the other API, which is invoke uh, response with streaming, uh, it'll send you the chunks back independently. Kind of like when you go to chat GPT, you know how it scrolls down your screen and you see kind of like incremental uh, text as it's computing the response. That's the, the idea here. Now the problem is when you use AWS Lambda, um, you can't like, it, once it executes your function, you don't get anything back until it's done. So you can't use that second approach. Well, you can, but you know, you're only gonna get the response from your Lambda function when everything is done. 
And so if you want to kind of emulate this kind of approach where, um, you know, you, maybe you have a website or a API that you want to be able to get this data in real time streaming, you'd have to use WebSockets. And that's kind of beyond the scope for this video. But if you guys are interested in seeing a WebSockets video with uh, Bedrock, let me know and I'll, I'll make one. But uh, let me just show you how to get started with this stuff really quick. Okay, so let's go down now to the configuration section. And we're gonna click on this Bedrock demo role here. And this is gonna open up a new tab. And then I'm just gonna open this tab here. And okay, what do we need to do here? We need to go to add permissions on the right. And we're gonna create a inline policy for Bedrock, uh, specifically with the permissions that we need. So give this a moment to load here. So for service, we're gonna type in Bedrock, okay? And then select it. And then for the actions, um, we want the invoke. Uh, so, so just type in invoke into the autocomplete here. And then here are the two ones that we care about. So invoke model, that's the one we definitely want and we're gonna use. And then there's invoke model with response stream. So that's the second one that, you know, we can give access to, um, to our Lambda function, but you know, it's not gonna be very helpful for us. And then for resources, I'm just gonna choose all here. Um, and then we're gonna go to next and policy name uh, bedrock uh, invoke access access and then go to create policy and then now we have a new policy that's attached to this role if we expand it we can see that we have bedrock colon invoke model and then bedrock colon invoke model with the response stream okay perfect so we're done here and i'm just going to close this tab now we're going to go back to the lambda section of the console and we're ready to um, play with the code so let's go to the code section and uh, we are right here in the editor. I'm just gonna do this all inside um, the built-in IDE. So I'm just gonna drop in some code here, then I'll explain to you exactly what's going on. So this is like just basically boilerplate, um, but let's go through this line by line. So first we're importing the Boto3 client, we're importing JSON library. Uh, we're getting a reference to the Boto3 client for the service name bedrock-runtime. I'm specifying my region. Keep in mind that Bedrock is currently only supported in a select few regions in AWS. If you wanna check that, what you can do is navigate back to the AWS console, go to the region up here in the top right, and only uh, the ones that are supported will be highlighted. So that's a quick and dirty way that you can check. Okay, and then in terms of the input that we're gonna pass into the API, uh, so we have an input object here. The first thing we need to do is provide it with a model ID. We're gonna use cohere, which is command text v14. Uh, we're specifying the content type, which is application JSON. We're accepting star slash star. Then within the body, this is really where the details of our prompt are located. So we have the, the prompt itself, and I'm just gonna provide what is AWS. You can alternatively like grab this stuff. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I'm missing my Lambda handler uh, function here. So actually, let, let's just do that now. So def Lambda underscore handler, and then I need to go like that and then tab everything over. And of course, I'm missing um, the event and context. So make sure you pass that in. Okay, cool. Um, so back to where we were. So we had the body with a prompt. What is AWS? We're setting the max tokens to 400. So that's the max uh, tokens we're gonna get back. The temperature, these are all settings that you can specify as per the model input. So temperature, uh, the p-value, k, stop sequences, return likelihoods. Uh, you're gonna have to read up on the documentation for all these specifics. Um, I'm not gonna explain them here. And then what we're simply doing is we're just saying response is equal to bedrock.invoke model. We're passing in the body, which is uh, right here. We're passing in the model ID, which is cohere or command text v14. Uh, we're passing in the accept and then the content type. And that's pretty much all you need to do. And then if you wanna see the response, you just need to print it out. So let me just kind of drop that small uh, final piece in here. Uh, so we're saying response body is equal to json.loads, response.body, and you got to read off the output. And then we're just printing that out. Um, so let me try to uh, deploy this now, and we're going to test this out. And there's going to be a problem here, and, and I'll, uh, I'll warn you, or at least there should be a problem. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'll explain to you how to fix it. So we deployed it. We're going to create a test event now. So we can just put in like random test event leave all this as default. We're not reading off the input, that's fine. And let's try this now. So we're gonna click on test and if there's no error, let's see what happens here. 
Okay, one second, two seconds, three seconds, boom. Task timed out after 3.01 seconds. Now, the reason this happens is because when you create a Lambda function by default, uh, the max timeout is three seconds. So if three seconds expire, then it's just gonna kind of cancel the invocation. And just the way the Bedrock uh, and LLM models work, it takes a little bit longer, quite a bit longer actually than three seconds in order for you to get the response back. And because it's waiting for the entire response object, like we talked about earlier, um, it's it's even longer. It's not just like the independent chunks, it's the entire response. So it can t take between like 10 and 20 seconds. Um, at least that's what I've seen in the past. So in order to fix that, we need to increase the timeout duration. And so let's go to configuration over here. Uh, we're going to go to general configuration and then we're going to see, okay, so timeout here, the timeout duration is set to three seconds right now. Going to click on edit and the highest you can make this is 15 minutes. So why not? 15 minutes uh, and then set that to zero seconds. We're going to click on save now and let's go back and try this again. So we're going back to the code section. I didn't change anything. So this is the same code that we were just looking at. And let's go ahead and try this. We're going to click on test. And so one second, two seconds, three, four, five. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time here. So like I said, it does uh, take a little bit to get the response back. There you go. And so if you look inside this object here, uh, let me actually grab this and then I'll like paste it into a separate website so you can read it. So here's what the response object looked like. So we got inside generations, we got this, this uh, state stuff, and then inside the text field inside of that, uh, my prompt was what is AWS? And here's the response. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, uh, which is a cloud computing platform that provides a wide range of services for individuals and businesses. And you can read on and on and on. Yeah, it's talking about S3, EC2. Uh, it's actually even formatted well too. So it's got like new line tabs and all that. Um, so this is how to set off Bedrock with a Lambda function. Now, like I said, if you want to see this with a WebSockets demonstration to show that kind of incremental piece by piece, chunk by chunk response, let me know and I'll go ahead and make a video on that. But in the meantime, this is how to set up Lambda with Bedrock. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. And thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.